I'm in Iowa. And it's been uh, lovely so far. I, it's funny because there's not a big, big difference between, there wasn't a big change between Iowa and Missouri, except that in Missouri, I already talked about this last week, but people are less likely to be like, what are you doing? There's, there's, a, there's a lot less kind of, um, people are more shy, more like, okay, she's doing something strange, but all right. <laughs> This week I went from Knoxville to Amana. Um, uh, the, my, when I got to Knoxville, I stayed with a minister and his wife, and he's a really avid bicyclist. And I wish I'd taken a picture of his basement because he has a bike shop in there and he does like 30 miles a day in the morning. And he actually drove me on my little route out to the bridge that I was going to take, which was closed, of course, because all bridges are closed in Missouri and Iowa. <laughs> but the rerouting wasn't going to be a big deal. I, there was a bicycle path that went all the way into Pella. So anyway, he, he said, oh, I know a great route that you can do. He's an avid cyclist. Their boys had just gone off, their twin boys had just gone off to college. They're going to the same school. They're sharing a dorm room. And um, so they said, well, we're empty nesters now, so we'd love to have you. And they showed me the bike route. There's a very pretty dam with, uh, there was a guy who had caught this huge, huge fish and was carrying it out to his car. So the next morning I got up to walk the route and I walked into town. I'd left my bag with them because my, my pole that comes out of my bag is on a little grommet and the grommet had pulled out from the fabric completely. And he said, I can fix this. and. Um, but I didn't think of it till the morning. So in the morning, he went to his out to his shop and put a bunch of glue and nuts and grommets and things. And then it wasn't really ready because <laughs> we did it that morning. And I said, you know what? I'm just gonna walk five miles into town. Why don't I just stop at your house? Because you're right on the way and get my bag then. And I don't have to carry all my heavy stuff for five miles. And they said, sure. So I stopped in, I stopped at Dairy Queen and they gave me free ice cream. I just walked in there and I was trying to grab my wallet out of the back of my bag and they were asking me what I was doing. That is one place they asked me what I was doing. And um, he said, well, it's just on the house. We can just buy you an ice cream. Don't dig your wallet out. <laughs> and uh, so I was eating my ice cream cone and went and got my, my bag. Then I walked to um, Pella and I got as so I kept walking and I walked the route that he suggested and I was just going really slowly. My feet hurt so badly this past week. I am very ready for my new shoes. My new shoes came and they are the wrong size. They're the right size, but they don't fit for whatever weird reason. Um, they are significantly smaller than the boots that I have that are the same size. And so it's just a different model, the way that they're shaped and my toe hits the side of the front of it so he's sending me a new pair which i'll get tomorrow i'll get today at four so that was like a, a one of the main issues with my shoes had just worn out and i put new gel inserts into them and that would have been fine i thought the problem was after i put the new gel inserts my feet killed me and i thought it was because i packed my foot in too much and it was crammed in there no 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 it was i took out the other inserts and put the, just the gel inserts in and still my feet were killing me because they're slippery and my slow's feet were going like this into the front of the boot all day and that's why my toes hurt so much so then those i put the other inserts on top of the other inserts and then that didn't happen anymore but by then i still have really purple bruises on my toenails because my toenails were jamming into the shoes so i have all these bruises on my toes the joys of walking miles and miles every day but I got to the bridge and I called my hostess and she's like would you just like me to pick you up on the other end of the bridge and I said yeah but I don't know if they'll let me walk across it she said oh I'm sure they will so I just walked as if I was allowed to walk through a construction zone and they just kind of waved at me and I went across and uh, a lot of times if you just do stuff as if you're supposed to be there no one minds and so that's what I did then uh I walked to Sharon, and uh, the next day, oh, I stayed with Mary and Wayne, and I didn't really hardly meet Wayne because he works like three jobs, but I did see him in the morning when he was going off to work, 
and I slept in the basement there, and he's, he's like, hi, and went out. And uh, she and her daughter were very sweet, and her daughter actually made me, a, she had a little handmade card, and then in it she put numbers I could call if I needed places to stay. Very sweet. Yeah, people are so nice to me. It's kind of incredible how nice everyone is. So, Terry and Diana were in New Sharon, and I called the Methodist Church there, because that the, they made a bunch of phone calls for me, and nothing had worked out. And I called the Methodist Church, and got the secretary, and she was kind of like, uh... I think a lot of times people think I'm a transient, and that I want something from them. Really, I want to document their town, know something about their community. I do want something from them, and I want a place to sleep for the night. But it's... I'm not somebody looking for a bunch of handouts or a donation or anything. I really am more interested in staying with a family because it, it makes the town interesting. So, anyway, she was a little, like, at first, like, okay, maybe, well, I'll have the minister call you, but we're having a youth night tonight. Well, that turned out really well, because Terry called. He's like, you can come to our youth night, and we're doing progressive dinner, and we're going to all every all these different, the kids were on a hayride, and they stopped at one house, and then they drive to the next house, and the next house, and that ate, the, ate dinner that way, you know, appetizer, and then the vegetable course, and then the main course, and then dessert, and dessert was a bonfire with s'mores, so, and then sang songs around the fire, and it reminded me of youth camp, it was really, it was pretty fun, and the kids loved it, they loved it, they were like, hi, you know, every time I'd walk by, they'd be like, hey, camera lady, Hi, Mom! And some of them first hand because they didn't want to be on. They're like, we're on TV! And I'm like, sort of. Yes, it is just on TV. People are watching this. <laughs> I had a lot of fun at their house, and I didn't have to cook there either because um, we went to the progressive dinner thing. And then, oh, I, I stayed with Lee and Dick in Montezuma. And um, they they were, you know, Terry had called ahead, and they're an older couple, and they're very, very nice, and they have a nice house, and there's actually, she said, oh, you don't mind my statues, do you, because <laughs> she put me in their old bedroom, because they built an extension on the house to have their bedroom, in. and upstairs, there was a whole crash scene, I took a picture of that, you'll have to put that in there, I thought it was kind of cool, so I'm sleeping, and I wake up, and there's, you know, the, the crash, <laughs> the wise men, and Jesus, and Mary, and Joseph, and... <laughs> They took me to a very favorite, in Grinnell, a very favorite pizza place that all the college kids come home and, and go to. And it's, uh, they say, oh, you have to go there. So we had some delicious pizza. And uh, then I and went and stayed with Roger and Louise in Brooklyn. And they are farmers. And they used to be big pig farmers. I think they were a little like when I said I was a vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't raise pigs anymore. They raise corn and soybeans. And we went to the football game. It was the first football game of the season. And uh, BGM got totally creamed. They, it was like 21 to 0 or something like that. Um, which is too bad. Because they played, they actually played, the boys played pretty well. I mean, for a high school team, it was not bad. But the other team way, way, way outmatched them. Like, like literally, they're a bigger school and a bigger team. And it's always funny to me, you look at the you look at the stats on a high school football team, right? Like these kids are like six foot three, two hundred pounds. That's a pretty big kid. Like if you saw that person face to face, you'd think that is a giant human being. But when you see all the boys out on the football field, they still look like kids. Even though they're like half of them are six foot three, there's a bunch of them that are, you know, five six and weigh 140 pounds or something. But it's it's interesting that uh, when you look at when you look at their statistics, they actually, you know, look like they could play football. They're big kids, but out on the field, they look like they look like children. It was it was very sweet anyway to go to the game. And I was exhausted, and my feet still hurt tons. And I was like, I still have two more towns to go, or three more towns to go. And then I was walking to Ladora. I was planning to stay in Ladora, and Roger and Louise were like, I don't know, Ladora is like a hundred people. <laughs> And she called a bunch of different friends, and she managed to connect me with somebody in Marengo. Oh, actually, no, she didn't. Um, Lee and Dick, actually, she had knew from watching it that I didn't have any. She was called, do you have any place to stay in Marengo? I said, well, I was going to go to Ladora. She said, well, I can hook you up with somebody in Marengo, but not Ladora. So I got connected to Karen and Sam, 
in Marengo, and I decided just to walk 20 miles instead of my plan. And they picked me up before I reached town, so I didn't have to walk a million, million miles. And um, I, they were, they actually had their friends, the Huxfords, over. And we had dinner, and we chatted, and, you know, I think they're sort of the liberal bastion of uh, Iowa. <laughs> the, uh, Sam was in the first group of Peace Corps students. He met President Kennedy, and they, he went to Nepal, and it was the first group of Peace Corps, I don't know what he called Peace Corps volunteers um, that our country had. I thought that was really cool. And then the Huxfords were, are both musicians and band teachers, and they met right before they went, um, were going to go, they met because they were going to go on this band trip to Russia in 1966. They went to the Berlin Wall when it was fairly recently built. They went to Russia. They went to all, all over Europe. It was a really, it was an exchange. I guess the Bolshevik dance group came to the U.S. and they were the exchange. So they said we were a really good band. <laughs> and I thought that was also fascinating to go to that region at that time. That's at the height of the Cold War. And this week was actually a fair amount of like traveling and uh, out in the world people. I don't know how to say that, but we're late. <laughs> Either through mission work or through personal travel or, you know, through a band. Traveling because we were in a band. And then we get to Amana. So I wasn't planning on going to the Amana villages because I was going to go from Marengo directly to Walford because it was. 21 miles if I took the back road, and everybody's like, you have to go to Amana. And I, I knew I had, I knew about the Amana colonies because my mom and I went on a trip out to Colorado a million billion years ago. I think I was 18, and I still have a wool blanket from the Amana woolen mill. So I thought, okay, I'll walk to Amana. Well, I'm walking to Amana, and I have no host for that evening. And um, this man stopped, and he said. I talked to Karen at church, or he, he couldn't remember the name, actually. He said, I talked to my friend at church, or one of the ladies at church was talking about you this morning, and I saw you, and you can stay at my house. And I'm like, oh, okay, strange man who I don't know, <laughs> which he laughed about later. But anyway, I was a little like, okay. Then Karen called back and said, oh, Don Meisel. I know, I know who you're talking about. And he's a wonderful man, he's wonderful. So, I stayed at his house, and he had been a graphic designer for years and years, and also has traveled all over the place. He had all posters from all the different places he'd been to all around the world. And that was one of those moments where it was Karen and Sam and the Huxleys came down, and we all went out for dinner in the Mountain Villages. And it was one of those moments where I realized sometimes I'm not just connecting to a friend of somebody's, but sometimes I'm connecting them together. They, he said, you know, they've never come down and and they, they, we all went for dinner, and it was a German restaurant, and they, they do it family stuff. So the Malin and the villages were like a colony, uh, a communal society, until the 30s during the Depression, I guess. It just, also, I think the people started to realize they could make money. You know, it was hard times, so the, the things changed in that communal society. But they all, before then, they ate. Oh, this is 